I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What country do we live in? America. What country do we live in? America. What is patriotism? I don't know. <laughs> what do you like about America? That we have freedom. Do you know why we celebrate the 4th of July? I think it's because we won some war or something. How do you celebrate it? We shoot a bunch of fireworks and watch them blow up. How could we make America a better place? By recycling and helping the world be a better place. <laughs> what country do we live in? The U.S. Which is also known as? America. What is patriotism? Something about us loving our country. Do you, what do you like about America? That we're free. How do you celebrate the 4th of July? Fireworks and hanging with my friends. Do you know why we celebrate it? Because we want our independence. How could we make America a better place? N no profanity and like gangs and recycling. What country do we live in? We live in the USA and Florida. What is patriotism? Uh, I don't know. What do you like about America? Um, well, we live in a free country and that's really good for us. Do you know why we celebrate the 4th of July? We celebrate America's birthday. How do you celebrate it? We do fireworks at my house with my dad and my mom. How could we make America a better place? Um, we can start by um, not doing bad things in the world. What country do we live in? America. Why do you like America? Um. You know how we can make America a better place? We can stop littering. Okay. What country do we live in? The United States of America. What is patriotism? I believe that patriotism is having respect for your country and your country's troops and the, and the way that our country works. Do you like, what do you like about America? I like that America is multicultured. I can't talk anymore. No, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> do you know why we celebrate July the 4th? The 4th of July we celebrate because of our country's independence. How do you celebrate it? I celebrate with a big barbecue full of mashed potatoes and some fireworks towards the end. What country do we live in? We live in the United States of America. Do you like living in America? I love living in America. There's no other place I'd rather be. Do you know what patriotism is? Well, I think patriotism has a different meaning for everybody, but to me, it means to show loyalty and respect and love for this wonderful country that we live in and, and to have the freedoms that we have here that a lot of people in other parts of the world don't have and enjoy. We enjoy a lot of freedom here in our country. Do you know why we celebrate the 4th of July? Yep, because that's when we won the Revolutionary War and it's to just a day to celebrate um, our freedom, to be able to, what our country has been built on over the past several hundred years. What do you usually do to celebrate it? Cook out, traditional barbecue with the fam. <laughs> do you know how we can make America a better place? I think that if people could learn to just respect each other more and treat each other with more dignity and, and just listen to others, I think that would help us all. How could we make America a better place? We could make America a better place by enforcing the law against littering because global warming is a serious issue in the world. We could also help America by helping the needy children that are hungry. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi, 
I'm Rachel, and we are here with Miss Shelley. She is a veteran of the Gulf War. She is going to talk about why she wanted to fight for our country. Thank you for joining us, Miss Shelley. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. What made you want to be in the war? Well, the war wasn't started when I joined the Army, so I didn't necessarily want to be in the war. Got kind of caught up in that. How long have you been a veteran? Since 1991. Why did you think it was important to fight for our country? Because of the fact that with the traveling that I did as a kid, I went to a lot of other countries. And the more I traveled and the more I learned, the more I found out that although our system isn't perfect, it's the best one that I have found and that it's worth protecting. How did your service end in the Army? With the end of my term. Were you the only girl in the Army at the time? No, but there weren't a whole lot of us. It was mostly guys. However, once you get in there, you find out it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy, how tall you are, how short you are, what your race is, everybody's green. How long do you have to train it to be in the Army? Well, it kind of depends on what you're going to do. Basic training is eight to nine weeks, and then you have something called an AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training. And I trained out in Colorado, which was very nice, and my school was nine months long. It was a tough one. I was trained to be a 35 GY1, and you don't know what that is. What it is, it's somebody that repairs hospital equipment, not people. They bleed. <laughs> what kind of uniform did you wear? They were all ugly. <laughs> They're designed to camouflage you, and they have all kinds of pockets. They're designed to repel water. They have winter uniforms and summer uniforms. There's different kinds of boots. Then you have your dress uniform, which is called your class A's. What advice would you give girls like me that want to pursue a career in the Army? The best advice I can give you is, first of all, if this is something you've decided you want to do, they have so many different schools. You can learn anything from being a nurse to teaching. So choose something that you're interested in anyway, and then you can do the best job at it. Where do you work right now? I own Carshell's Art and Framing Gallery, and I work here. Do you want to go back in the Army? I'm a little old for that, but I will tell you that a lot of the things that I learned in the Army, I use here. If there's a piece of equipment that breaks in the back, I fix it. If I need new lightering, I put it in. So I took everything that I learned from there and carried it with me to my life now. Can you tell me about the necklace you're wearing? Well, I pulled these out. I hadn't looked at them in a long time. These are my dog tags. And what they do is identify you. So they have your name, your religion, your blood type. They've got the information on there that they need if you fall in battle and they need to help you. What skills did you learn in the Army that you use today? I learned that even though I was part of a cohesive unit where everybody pulled together, that I had to be self-reliant, and I use that still. Thank you for joining us today, Michelle. That was very interesting. For Girl TV, I'm Rachel. Bye. I'm Sarah. We are here with Miss Shannon. She's a veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom. She's going to talk about why she chose to fight for our country. Thank you so much for joining us, Miss Shannon. Thank you for having me. When you were my age, what did you want to be when you grew up? You know, I'm not really positive what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, all I know is I only had a couple people in the Air Force, well, in the military, and um, never even really considered the military, actually. What made you want to be in the Air Force? Um, I went to the recruiter's office uh, just to talk to them and see what they had to offer. Um, I just wanted to get out of uh, my hometown, basically, and that was my way of doing it. Cool. Have you ever flown in an aircraft? I have. I've flown in a C-130, a cargo plane, uh, a C-17, which is a little bigger. So. Cool. How did you feel when you found out that you had to go overseas? Scared. Mm -hmm. Very scared. Um, very nervous. Uh, just thought about my family and you know what I was going to be putting my mom through, and uh, uh, that was basically my only fear: just how I was going to affect my mom, how it was going to affect her. 
Were you the only girl in the Air Force at the time? No, I was not. What is it like being a woman in the Air Force or a woman at war? You know, it's not much different than a guy being in the Air Force or a guy being at war or in the military. It, there's, uh, there's some drawbacks. There's certain things that we can't get into, but mm -hmm. uh, overall it's becoming uh, a really united uh, front when it comes to men and women. How long did you have to train to be in the Air Force? Eight weeks. Wow. That's a long bad. time. <laughs> it, well. it depends on the, on the uh, branch of service. Some mm -hmm. of them are longer, some of them are shorter. So eight weeks from the Air Force. But they've talked about uh, extending it, so. Wow. What kind of uniform did you wear? Uh, it's a battle dress uniform. Um, it's kind of like that? this one. They have changed <laughs> okay. it since I joined. So this is the newest one. It's an ABU. So that's basically what you you, you know you wear a lot. Um, mm -hmm. We do have blues, what we call blues. Um, and that's mostly when you're working in an office. Cool. What advice would you give to girls like me that want to pursue a career in the mil military? I would say do a lot of research um, on which branch you want to go into. They all offer something different. Um, so you definitely want to look at that and see whether or not it is something that you want to go into. And I think it is the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Uh, it, was a, it was a good road for me. It good. gives you a lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. keeps you physically fit. It's, it's a good, good avenue to take. Where do you work right now? Right now I am stationed at Charleston Air Force Base in South Carolina. I am with the Aerial Port Squadron. Um, I do air transportation, which basically means um, I can do anything in a uh, airport. We can run the inside of the airport, the outside of the airport. Do you want to go back into the Air Force again? I am currently in the Air Force okay. right now. I'm in the reserves. Uh, I was active duty for seven, but I've been in the reserves for four years now. Wow. Thank you, Ms. Shannon, for joining us today. It was really great meeting you. Thank you. For Girl TV, I'm Sarah. Bye. Can you show me how to salute? I sure can. Uh, we're going to start off with the feet. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This is called stand at attention. You put your feet basically like this, your heels together and your feet out just a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Good job. Okay, so what you're going to do is cup your hands like this, put them to your side, and when you bring up your right arm, it's always with your right arm. Can I have it at that? Mm -hmm. And this part right here goes to the corner. Okay. Like that. Exactly. Okay. And so what you would do is you meet an officer, you Sorry. come up, and you go down. Okay. And then you cup. You always make sure you cup back. Okay. So. All right, Very cool. good. You did an awesome job. Thank you. A natural. I love it. Thank you. Um, who do you usually salute to? We salute to um, officers, uh, which is an 01 to an 09. Um, it can be any branch of service, so it's always good to know uh, the ranks in each service. That way you know whether you should be uh, saluting that person or not. And it's always outside. Um, on rare occasions you do it on inside, but uh, that's usually during some kind of ceremony. Okay. Do you ever salute to um, co-workers, co-military people? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Any officer. It doesn't matter whether uh, you work with them side by side. You always show that respect to that to the rank. Cool. Okay. Right. For Girl TV, I'm Sarah. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this strong segment with Tech Sergeant Winchester. Why do we need or even have laws? Laws are made to protect people and property. We have laws in this country for many reasons. One of the most important reasons is that laws help our society to function smoothly. For instance, what do you think would happen if there were no traffic laws such as obeying stop signs and traffic lights? If we didn't have laws such as those, we would find it hard to do our everyday business. Another reason we have laws is to protect the safety and basic rights of citizens. Here are some examples of what things would be like if we didn't have laws. When two streets cross each other, there is a stop sign. A law says you must stop when you see that stop sign. If you drive through that stop sign, you might hit another car. The people in the other car could be in injured or even killed. Or let's say you have saved up all your birthday money and bought a brand new bike. The law says that that bike is now yours to keep. What if someone else saw that bike and liked it? Could they come and take the bike away from you? They might try, but that is against the law. They could be arrested. There are other reasons for laws too, 
like to handle disputes, errors, or poor judgment of, given, of a given person. In any society, arguments between citizens can break down a healthy structure so the laws are in place to attempt to guarantee rights to members. So, let's say I want to steal a bag of candy from the store. I would decide not to because the laws tell me not to. And if I break the law, I could get in big, big trouble. Laws keep us safe from danger. That's why we need them. For Girl TV, I'm Kariani. Hi, I'm Kyla. And I'm Helena. Today we're talking about the three branches. The first one that we're doing is the judicial branch. The judicial branch is where the Supreme Court takes place. It's where the judges decide if the law is right or if the people obeyed the law or not. The Supreme Court was made up of the Constitution and Bill of Rights. The Congress decides where to place each judge. There are 13 judicial circuits. There are 94 district courts in the USA. The Supreme Court started on February 2, 1790. The next one we're doing is the legislative branch. The legislative branch is where they are important to people who write the laws and bills. The legislative branch writes bills for laws. The legislative branch is divided into two parts. There are 435 re representatives and 100 senators currently. The final branch we are doing is the executive branch. The executive branch is where the president comes in. Don't forget vice president and cabinet members. Oh yeah, they decide if the law is okay to be made one. For Girl TV, I'm Kyla. And I'm Helena. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Rachel, and today we'll be interviewing Officer Sherry from the Sarasota Police Force. What did you want to be when you were growing up? When I was growing up, I have always wanted to be a police officer. How did you get interested in the law enforcement field? I was working for a group of architects, and I had uh, done some design work for several deputies that lived in my neighborhood who moved on to the forensic division of the Broward Sheriff's Office. They asked me if I wanted to do a ride-along. I gladly accepted, went out with them. I was interested in forensics from that day on. So with that, uh, when I was old enough, I applied for the agency and was hired, and I've been in law enforcement ever since. What kind of education and special training did you need for the job? Well, um, at the time, I needed a high school diploma. Now it's a GED or a high school diploma and with some college. And there's a 16-week police academy. What is a typical day like on the police force? Well, we work 12-hour shifts here. A typical day for me uh, might be uh, starting off with um, a theft or a burglary from the previous evening. Uh, maybe a shoplifter during the afternoon, and maybe one or two um, other similar type calls, burglaries or a theft later on, and crashes. What is the toughest part of being a police officer? The toughest part about being a police officer is, you know, we always want to help victims, and we offer them advice and uh, ways to, for them to better help themselves. The toughest part is when they, um, either ignore your advice or they don't take your advice and they become victims again. How many other women are th on the Sarasota Police Force? There's about 16 or 17 other women. What is the most common type of crime you have to handle? Probably the most common type of crime uh, that I have to handle are thefts or burglaries. What is the craziest crime you have seen? The craziest was um, I had a man uh, got a call, a man that had a gun out in his front yard, and he was shooting at a tree. So when we finally were able to uh, secure him and uh, the gun, he told us that the bird in the tree was talking to him. Okay. <laughs> what do you like best about your job? I like helping people the best and being there for them. What is the most important thing people have to do in order to be safe in Sarasota? Uh, one of the most important things is they have to be aware of their surroundings and, that they, and not take unnecessary risks. If you weren't a police officer, what do you think you would be doing for a living? I think I would like to be an archaeologist for a living if I wasn't in law enforcement. What advice would you g give girls like me who want to grow up and be a police officer like you? Go for it. Just go for it. Thank you so much for being part of our show today. For Thank LCV, you. I'm Rachel. Bye. Goodbye. Hi, I'm 
I'm Jamie, and today I'm here at the National Guard Armory with Sergeant LeBeach. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. First of all, for people that don't know, what is the National Guard? The National Guard is a branch of the active duty Army, and what we do is typically the National Guard will take care of any kind of state emergencies instead of calling in active duty and then if there are things going on around the world that require more people than what the army can send, the National Guard will also augmentee the uh, active duty component and we will go and assist them. I've never seen an armory. What happens here? Um, with the National Guard, we don't have bases like active duty does. So the armory is a condensed version that just houses all the different um, components so that uh, everybody can work and make plans and um, schedule training and pretty much do everything that makes the National Guard work so that we can keep our soldiers ready in the event that they are needed. How do you join? Um, you join by visiting a recruiter. There are, there's one here in our armory and there are several others located um, around different towns and things like that. Or you can go to um, on the internet and find a recruiter in your local area, but you just go see a recruiter and they ask you questions and they do an ASVAB test to see if you qualify and for what jobs and they'll sign you up. When you sign up, how long do you stay in the National Guard? Um, it depends on how long you want your contract to be for. You can do anywhere between one and up to six years. And then once that first contract's over, if you want to stay longer, then you just sign another contract and until you feel like you've completed the service you wanted to do. What made you join? I have a lot of family that is prior military, um, none of them Army, mostly Navy and Marines, and I started looking into the Army to help me with uh, paying for college and also to carry on a family tradition, and I ended up liking it, so I stayed. How long have you been here for? I have been here for 11 years on the 4th of July. What's your favorite part about being in the National Guard? My favorite part about being in the National Guard is that you get to um, pretty much help others. You get to train soldiers, you get to kind of like create a, a secondary family for yourself. and. In my career, I've been able to go to a lot of different places around the world and see things that I probably wouldn't have been able to see on my own. Does the National Guard go to other countries? Yes, we do. Um, as everybody's seen in the news, there's um, events occurring in Afghanistan and Iraq and Kuwait. So we have soldiers there. And then we also have soldiers in other locations around the world to offset um, some of the burden for active duty component army. What did you want to be when you were growing up? When I was growing up, I actually wanted to be a lot of different things. Um, everything ended up being different areas within the medical field. And when I came to the army, I got to be a medic for the army and kind of do a little bit of everything that I wanted to do. How has being in the National Guard changed your life? The National Guard has changed my life in a lot of ways. Um, it's given me, like I said, it's let me um, meet a lot of people I wouldn't have met if I hadn't been here. Um, it's given me a lot of different experiences. It's been uh, a very good job for me. Um, it's it's. It's been really beneficial. It's helped me get through school, and it's bettered my life in a, in a lot of different ways. Why would you recommend the National Guard or to other women or girls just like us? Um, the National Guard is really nice in the sense that you, you get to do something that's bigger than yourself and you get to help other people and you get to go different places and experience different things in life that not being in the Army or the National Guard wouldn't be available to you. Um, the 4th of July is approaching. What do you think is the best way to show patriotism? 
Um, there's a lot of ways you can show patriotism, and it's not just by being in the military, but um, kind of like the world that we live in today, a lot of people tend to just stick with themselves and things like that. And I think a good way for anybody of any age or gender or anything to be able to show patriotism is to take the opportunities to get out and help people in their community or um, like clean up efforts or just be in a friendly face or helping somebody out. And that way we can, you know, build our, start building our community at lower levels and eventually, you know, make everywhere a better place. What would you tell girls like me that would want to be a part of something big to make the country a better place? Um, the National Guard is definitely one way that you could do that. Uh, there's also like other branches of service depending on what exactly you would like to do. But um, you don't necessarily have to be military to do something to better your country and everything else. Just being a good person and you know doing things to to make the world a better place for everybody whether it's small steps you know like teachers who educate our children to give them you know the foundation they need to be productive adults and I mean everybody makes a, a, a big effort so just doing things to, to make yourself uh, an asset to our community is a great way to in a smaller scale better our country well, thanks for joining us today. For Girl TV, I'm Jamie. Bye.